welcome to the 2023 Microsoft Excel Collegiate Challenge. In this month's challenge, we're going to be working on a keyboarding exercise. Keyboarding is really fundamental to financial modeling and Excel modeling more generally. That way you can be efficient in doing your work, both in the classroom and after you graduate in your career. So let's get to this first exercise. So when you open up the spreadsheet, you'll see this instructions tab. Note when you open it for the first time, you might see a pink ribbon across the top of your Excel file. That'll be telling you that you need to unblock macros. Macros are programs that run behind the spreadsheet that enable this spreadsheet to work, to show you message boxes, etc. And so those are going to need to be enabled. If they are not enabled yet, what you'll need to do is watch a video that we'll actually link to in the comments that'll show you exactly how to unblock macros and allow them to work in your spreadsheet. Now, once you have that done, we can take a look at the instructions here and get started. Now, you will want to read these instructions carefully just to make sure you understand them all, but we'll actually talk about a number of them as we work through. And notice that I can scroll down to see them all and also see some important options that we have here before we start. But you can also use Control alt minus to zoom out so we can see it all on one screen. All right, so I'll actually zoom back in so we can see it better. And you can see down here a couple of the controls we have. So now you have controls for whether you want instructions and whether you want keyboarding hints for either a Mac or a PC. So I'm gonna recommend we start with instructions on and PC keyboard hints on as well. And that's gonna really tell us how to complete the challenge. As you work on it and try to get better and faster at your keyboarding though, you'll know what you're doing and you won't need those hints anymore. So at that point you can turn them off and I'll actually let you go a little bit faster through the challenge. All right, so when you're ready, all you gotta do is hit this start button and it'll take us to that keyboarding challenge tab. So we hit start and it brings us to our first tab here. Here you see a message box pops up. We haven't had the timer start yet. It tells us we need to stay on the path. So only go on cells that have something in them already. And then also you can watch this video for instructions, but you're already here. All right, so let's go ahead and hit enter. So we clear out that message box. And our first thing is to go just one click to the right to that first cell. And once we get there, an instruction pops up. So it says, go to Excel reception. So that doesn't really tell us what we need to do. It's an instruction, but we need that hint for a little bit more. So if we click OK, now we get our PC hint that says press F5 and then type Excel underscore reception and enter. All right, so we'll unpack that step by step. So first I'm going to hit F5. All right. Note Depending on how your keyboard is set up, you might need to hit function F5 to enable that F5 versus a volume up or volume down, some other control that you have on your computer. Now we can see when we hit F5, we get the go to menu. So the go to menu allows us to go to any number of types of cells or a particular one in this case, which we're going to access via Excel underscore reception. All right, we hit OK and it takes us to cell F9. So F9 is a cell that we named or created a named range for and called it Excel reception. Named ranges are nice ways to efficiently work in Excel and reference a cell that you need to get to time and time again. All right, now that we're there, right, we went there with the Excel reception and F5 to go to, it gives us our next instruction. So you can see it says use a sequence of 100 downward to reach the contestants documents. So this is built to use the sequence function. So this is a new function that's relatively uh, fresh in the last couple of years in Excel. So if you're not operating on a most recent version of Excel, you might not have access to this. I'll show you another way to do this in just a second. But we'll start out and say, okay. So we'll type equals sequence 100. And what that's gonna do is spill 100 numbers from one to 100 down all the way to the bottom. All right, and we can hit control down arrow to see how far that's gone. And you can see that there are a couple other cells that it connected to. So there was a blank cell in the XXX and also a documents tab. So the documents or the cell is going to actually unlock a big set of data for us. So let's actually look at that data real quick. And then I'll show you an alternative if you don't have the sequence function. So the data we have is a number of people's names, indicators for whether they are a man or a woman, whether they are wearing a blue shirt or not, their GPA and their ID. So we'll work through these with a couple of questions as we go, but that's our data set that we're working with. All right, now what if you don't have the sequence function? What you can do then is we can start out by just typing a one in this first cell, and let's go to the next cell 
and type equals F9 plus one. So I'm just doing the previous cell plus one. If I then copy that down, I use control shift down arrow and then shift up arrow to go back by one. Then control D allows me to fill that down the entire way. So if you don't have sequence, you can still do the same thing. You will go off the track once, so you'll get one penalty doing that, but that shouldn't be too bad. Just adjust your time for that. All right, so now that we've gotten that through, we can go to our next cell, our next green target cell that we see pop up, and we get our next instruction. So it asks us how many men are competing. So we're gonna to wanna to sum up that column H, and that's exactly what the hint tells us. Equals sum H9 to H108. I'm gonna do that by typing sum and then using my control up arrow key to go over to the H column and then control shift up arrow to select the whole column. And notice I did include the man, the header at the top there. That's okay, Excel knows not to add that together and it'll go ahead and get the answer for us. And notice the answer here. So 60 is the answer. In your version, it might be a little different. There are random data sets in the spreadsheet. So each time through, you're gonna get slightly different answers. So we got our answer here, and when the answer is correct, notice it opened up the next question. So now we can go down two and get the next one. So here it says, what percentage of the contestants do not wear a blue shirt? So we'll wanna do this as a percentage, and we wanna think about the percentage that aren't wearing a blue shirt. So one thing to note is that we could use the average function to get the percentage that do wear a blue shirt, right? Because if you're averaging over zero and ones, you're gonna get the percentage. So in this case, we want the number that aren't wearing blue shirts. So we're gonna do one minus that average. So I'm gonna say one minus average, control up arrow a couple of times, right arrow, control shift up arrow, and I get my answer of 35%. Now I can keep going down. I can count them in with blue shirts. Now counting them in with blue shirts, you could think about setting up some helper cells here, right? We could use column L to basically write a formula that says if the column H is equal to one, so it's a man, and if I is equal to one, so it's a blue shirt, then we could also get a one, and then we could add those all up. So that's one way to do it. It would take a little bit longer. The other way we can do it is actually with some product. So some product is gonna multiply the adjacent values in two arrays together and then add them all up. So the idea is if you're a man and you're wearing a blue shirt, those are both gonna be ones. One times one is one, and so that'll count as a one when we add those up. Anything else, a zero, one, one, zero, or zero, zero, when those multiply will be zero, so we won't add those up. So this is a nice convenient use of the sum product function. And here we're just gonna arrow keyboard around the same way I did in the previous examples to get our answer. All right, next step, calculate the average GPA. And it's gonna ask us to only paste the value. So first we're gonna get the average and then we'll paste the value. And that's what that's telling us right there. So we're gonna say average. Here I'm gonna keyboard over a couple to the right, up. And you'll notice as I'm going up, there are a bunch of blanks. We're gonna be dealing with those in just a minute. But I get my average. I'm gonna copy it and use Alt ESV and then enter to paste the values. All right, our next question, let's get to it. So it says fill in the missing GPAs with the average GPA and then sum the GPA column. So I'm gonna start out and we'll talk through this one and I'm gonna sum the whole column. So we don't have our missing values filled in yet, but we'll get to that in a second. So I'm gonna sum them up. I'm then gonna copy my average value. That's what we're gonna use. And now I'm gonna select this whole column one more time. Because what I really wanna do is select all those blank cells. And there's actually a really great shortcut to do that. So if we hit F5, right, that go to, and you'll notice here that special is underlined with an S. This is how we access menus through our keyboard. So we hit Alt S to access that special menu. And then we see that the K is underlined in blanks. So we hit K to select blanks and then enter. And you see now that we actually have all the blank cells selected. So rather than having to select five different blank arrays individually, we save some time this way. And now we can paste that. And now we have our GPA values in. And if I scroll back to the bottom, you see that my answer was correct. So the next part of the challenge opened up. All right, let's go to that next question cell. So this says, go to L9 and report the last three digits of the ID number. All right, and we're gonna copy our formula down for all contestants. 
All right, so let's do that. So we go back over here. I got to L9. And here we're going to use the write function. So it's going to give us the th right three most characters from this text we have right here. Now to fill this down, I, want to I don't want to step off the path. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do control shift down arrow. And then just holding down shift, I can arrow back up. So I'm hitting the arrow key a number of times to get to exactly the range I want. So now control D fills that down and we have our answer correct. All right, moving on. Now it's going to ask us to do a little conditional formatting. So that GPA column, what we're going to do is highlight anything with a value greater than 3.6. So let's go back over there. I'm going to highlight our whole column without the GPA in this case. And now I'm going to use the shortcut Alt H. And then notice when I hit Alt H, it brings up the home menu. So I have all sorts of different options up here of what I can hit next. So I'm going to hit L for conditional formatting. Then notice that I'm going to do highlight cell rules. So that's also an H. And then G gives me greater than. So greater than pulls this up, I say 3.6, type that in, and hit enter. And in this case, we don't have too many that are 3.6, but there we see one at 3.7, 3.87, etc. And as soon as I clicked off my conditional formatting, it actually registered my answer and opened up the next one in line. All right, so we'll keyboard over to that next question. And it says, here's our winner. Ava's our winner of our keyboarding challenge, and let's adjust the font size. So this is another case where we can use Alt-H to open up that menu. Notice that FS up here by the font size gives us the font size. It accesses that menu for us. And we can type 20 to increase that font size to 20. Now notice again on this one, it says we need to move one arrow to the right, one spot to the right, before it triggers that our answer is correct. So make sure you're always moving one more to the right in this case. All right. Now we want to get the ID number associated with Ava, our winner. So I'm going to say OK. Here there's an X lookup you could use. I'm going to use a V lookup here just to show you alternative options. So if we select that, we can select our whole range. I'm going to breeze through the V lookup itself here. But if you don't aren't familiar with it, I'll go ahead and link to that in the comments of the video as well if you want help with the V lookup or the X lookup functions. All right, we have a couple steps left. In this step, we're going to change this value, so the ID, into a date. So we're going to use Control Shift 3 to do that. We're then going to go up. We have to go up one to trigger the answer to be correct. We're going to go up to this next green cell. It says this challenge was long. All right, now we're going to auto fit the column. This is one I use quite a bit. There's going to be Alt HOI. So Alt HOI. Oh, if you get stuck there, I'm going to escape a couple times. It didn't work for me. Oh, there we go. And again, one arrow up gets me there. And now once you click on the finish, it's going to show your total time, the number of penalties you got, and the, the adjusted time as a result. So in this case, I finished it in 790 seconds, went off the path 11 times. So my total score is 900, which it shows on the results tab. Now from here, you can keep practicing getting a faster and faster time, and that's what's always going to be counted. So keep working until you can get a faster time, uh, and then go ahead and resubmit it to XPREP, the platform, and we'll go ahead and record that and put that on a leaderboard on the website. Thank you for participating in the Microsoft Excel Collegiate Challenge. We're going to have more updates coming out each month, so stay tuned for a lot of exciting challenges throughout the year.